Hey everyone, since we're in beautiful Thailand, I wanted to share the view before I start talking about the whole hunter's refuge situation. So let's take a look here. So this is the swimming pool. You can see the view. We're gonna walk down there to the golf course as a backdrop. But basically while we're walking there, I wanna talk about the moon refuge situation. So moon refuge is kind of in an iffy spot. I know there was an emergency maintenance like yesterday, which basically just increased the number of slots it was like 50 people could only make it and now they changed it to 300 i believe but that wasn't really the core issue like the core issue with hunter's refuge is the open pvp versus the pve part so what they should have really done is just have two separate channels or even more because each channel can support up to 300 players right what they should have done is actually just get the number of players that are online at any given time and divide that by 300 and that's how many channels they have or just do it like the dynamic system like what they always did like more players who play the more channels there are like i feel like that would have made so much more sense but instead they just made this one channel and because they only had one channel everyone's trying to get in and a lot of people can't get in and that is one of the issues but another issue which i can't really blame them is the you know there are guilds out there there's homer and there's a couple others they you know they made an alliance and you know there's nothing wrong with making an alliance and uh, killing people on site and trying to maximize efficiency basically because it's perfectly normal you want to maximize the most out of the event so i don't blame them for this i just kind of look at NC West and go, hey, sorry for changing the camera. My, uh, apparently my regular camera over here ran out of battery. So I was like, okay, so I've got to use my phone now. Um, so basically what I was saying was, it's totally fine for people to try to maximize on the event. So what Homura is doing, what all these other guilds making alliances and doing packs and stuff like that, that is perfectly fine. They simply just want to maximize the gains from this event. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone should be able to do that if they want to. The problem is NC West should realize by now that they need to separate the PVE and the PVP communities because every time they try to do an event that clashes both of them together, there's always tons of drama and people just are unhappy because there's always a conflict of interest because both sides want to maximize their gains from the event. They want to either farm more materials, farm more gold, etc. And the rewards from Hunter's Refuge is actually really, really nice. I quite like the direction that they're going with that. Like that much gold, that much materials, it's amazing. It is. It's really, really amazing. But the problem is that once, because the rewards are so good, everyone is going to try to get a piece of that pie. And because of that, it causes a lot of drama because everyone's fighting, everyone's killing each other. And since PvP is enabled in that, the PvPers obviously have an advantage. So instead of just saying, oh, we'll see how it turns out and just let it be, what NC West should do is simply make multiple channels. And by making multiple channels, you either depend on the community to decide, okay, channel one's the PvP one and channel two's the PvE one, or you simply have it in the system to have when the event is available, you click on it and you click on whether you want to join the PvP one or the PvE one. And maybe have the PvP one have even greater rewards because people are essentially taking a risk by joining it. And I feel like it would have worked out so much better that way if you just give players options and just avoid having conflict. So it's not Mikoto's fault or Homura's fault for seeing the event, doing the research and seeing, the, okay, how are we gonna maximize the event? Like you wanna maximize your gains, you wanna make the most out of your time. So it's perfectly understandable that they're doing this. So I still put most of the blame on NC West and NC Soft, but still, they really should have just reached out to the community. Like the community can help so much, yet NC West doesn't ask for any of our opinions. They saw that this event would be great, you know, the rewards are awesome, right? But they failed to notice and nail down all the fine details. And that is where most things go wrong. It's in the fine details. The big picture is, this is great. Everyone's gonna get materials, everyone's gonna gear up faster, thus we can increase the power creep in the game and everything will be great. But instead what's happened because they failed to look at the small details is the top 
1% or 2% in the server are getting richer and richer. And then they're jacking up the prices in the marketplace because they have access to all these materials. And the newer players or the majority of the players aren't able to get any of these materials. And thus the people who do have these materials have full control over the market and thus it's a monopoly. And that's why if you look at Moonstones, if you look at Elysian Orbs, if you look at all the tradable materials, they're all being jacked up in price. And that's not good for the game. That's not good for economy at all because how are the newer players or how are the lower gear players or how are the lazier players going to gear up if they can't buy or afford any other stuff, right? So, I mean, it's very, very difficult to blame the whales in this scenario. Like, sure, what they're doing morally isn't correct, but can you really blame them? The game design allowed it, so they're gonna do it. I'm kind of on the fence on a lot of the things here. I just don't really know how I feel. But anyway, let's head back to the room and I'll continue. Okay, we're back in the room. So basically the TLDR is, I don't want the communities to be split apart like people who love doing PvP, people who love doing PvE, it's all part of the game. It's more beneficial for the two communities to get along with each other. Obviously, we need some changes in the development side. Like, I think NC West can do a much better job in organizing events in order to cater to both the PvEers and the PvPers. I feel like that's kind of a very important thing that uh, NC West needs to realize and needs to capitalize on. So even though I see a lot of hateful comments, a lot of toxicity on the Blade and Soul Reddit and on Discord and stuff like that, honestly, it doesn't really benefit anyone if the community is separate. I feel like we need to have a more united community in order for things to work out better. But because of the nature of this event, is very similar to the nature of the Valentine's event where um, we had to spin the wheel and then we had to like queue up and stuff. Um, but obviously there was a lot of people that just ran around and started killing people because that was also part of the event. And because of that, it kind of forces the community to be segmented and to uh, fight each other. So NC West really needs like a wake up call on that because you're literally pushing your players away from the game. And if they're not playing the game because they don't want to deal with this crap anymore, there's nothing left, right? Like the whales will get bored of the game. You're helping them right now get very, very rich, which is great. But do realize that once people get max gear and they have everything and there's no challenge in the game anymore, no content that's catered towards them anymore, they're not gonna play the game anymore because there's just nothing to do. So even though the whales right now or the PVP players are getting a ton of gold, a ton of materials, do understand that they are literally just rushing to the end game where there's nothing left for them to do. That's, that's pretty much what happened in 6v6. Like the 6v6 battleground, there's not enough people that play it anymore because people just don't want to deal with it. People are just done with the toxicity. They don't want to spend the time to gear up. They don't want to spend the time to grind because of all the levers, the throwing, the wind trading. And there's just too much crap that they don't, that people just don't want to deal with anymore. And all this information is coming from me, which is just a regular pve -er. I don't even do battlegrounds and I know about all this stuff. So it's kind of important that uh, NC West actually looks into this and does something about it. If they don't do anything about it, it's just going to get worse because people are going to get bored, they run out of stuff to do, and we might get another hacking incident, which in the end actually harms the community or the player base rather than the hacker. The hacker just gets banned. He's done. But it hurts the community. There was that couple days where people were so scared because they were getting banned left and right, and people just lose trust, and they're not going to spend money anymore on the game because they're like, wow, you know, I spent $1,000 on the game, but I got banned because I was demon roll in uh, Eternity temple you know it's it you can't play with people's trust like that people's trust in a company is very very important so i do hope nc west is listening to this i'm not expecting them to listen to it though what we should do as a community is try to see what we can do to make blade and soul slightly a better place but that's just my thoughts about the current situation of the hunter's refuge 
do share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm curious to see uh, what you guys think. But yeah, that's it for me today, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye! What can I say except you're welcome for the heat?